Hello everyone. So, as you can see, it's been another cold night. Uh, we're a third of the way through January now. We haven't had any severe cold here in North Lincolnshire. Um, we've had a couple of lows around minus two, minus three, but nothing too bad. So, today I wanted to talk about what we do, or what I do here, to prepare for a deeper cold in the garden. Now, I'm not talking about you know, minus 15, minus 20, anything like 2010, because at that point, you generally have to dig up a lot of the plants, choose what you want to protect, um, you know, heat things in the garden. You'd have to take a lot further measures to actually keep a lot of your plants. But I'm talking about minus six, minus eight, temperatures where a lot of the plants should be absolutely fine, but others might need an extra level of protection just to make it through. So in a garden like ours where there are quite a few plants which don't appreciate real deep or prolonged cold, one question could be why don't you simply protect the plants at the end of autumn and leave it like that till spring, uncovering them? Now in some sort of Eastern European countries I've seen this and people can get away with it if you take the right steps, but generally speaking with our wet winters here in the UK it won't necessarily be the deep cold that kills the plants but the combination of that with the humidity are being absolutely wrapped away all winter they won't appreciate it they like the airflow and it'll help stop you know other problems building up that will reveal themselves in spring it's pretty clear to see that the garden is a bit of a mess this time of year especially this year for us because we have just moved in a few months ago i'm slowly working through the jobs i got to do but as you can see there's plenty of hard landscaping to be done plenty of planting still outstanding but until things dry up a bit there's not a lot i can do so by this point, all the plants that are tender, house plants, um, the red bananas, they're all inside for the winter. I tend to do that either late October, early November, pushing it to mid-November maybe. Once they're inside, that's it till late spring. You don't need to worry about them, they're safe. And this year, I've got a polytunnel up there near the house, which I use for my sort of half tender plants any of the canners, and eventually that will be replaced with a greenhouse or two. So the question really is, how do you protect the plants that are stuck outside, the ones that it's not practical to just uproot and take in, and what extra steps do you have to take if there's severe cold being forecast? First off, looking at tree ferns, Dicksonia antarctica is the most common sort here in the UK, it's the hardiest. They're generally all right, especially in sort of more shelter locations, but most of the UK, you shouldn't need to take any extra steps to keep them going. Now, we have been lulled into a bit of false sense of security with the last few mild winters, but there's potential for severe cold, particularly this year. There seems to be a bit of a grey area as to what's coming up late this month and into February. So we won't really know what's happening until it's almost too late to do anything. So currently, all the tree ferns have got is a bit of straw stuffed into the crown. Now, I generally just do this, just push it down. You can use a ball of fleece instead, anything like that. I generally do this when there's temperatures between sort of freezing and minus three forecast. And all that does is it protects the new fronds, which are currently just gathering just under here to unfurl out in late spring, sort of May, June time at the latest. They are the most tender part of the plant and that's what needs protecting. However, if more severe cold is forecast, we're talking you know, minus six, minus eight degrees C, anywhere around there, you do need to step up your protection. Now the actual plants themselves should be fine down to these temperatures. You will almost definitely lose all the fronds. Now it produces new fronds every year. They stay green until minus two, minus three or really heavy frost. And then they tend to brown off like this. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. In spring, they'll produce a new flush of fronds, which will, you know, be a bright green and take over these. You won't even notice these. Now, for my ferns, I'm actually trialing now from, well, from this year forwards, leaving the old brown fronds on. Just for the purpose of, you know, increasing the humidity around the trunk, giving it that extra level of protection. And I think it gives it a certain natural look that you lose if you chop them off. But, like I said... If we've got severe cold forecast, don't worry about the fronds. There's no point protecting them. Even chop them off if you have to, but I generally like to leave that as late as possible if that's what I'm going to do. When preparing for this deeper cold, um, if the straw on the top of the plant isn't gonna be enough, what you need to do is actually protect the trunk. Now, it's not really a trunk, it's more of a buildup of roots, all these old parts of the fronds, 
the top foot of the trunk or top 30 centimeters is roughly where most of your growing point is that's a crucial bit to protect in these circumstances what people use is either fleece any sort of breathable fabric I've, well i've seen some people using sleeping bags for it and just protect wrap up as much of the trunk as possible what that'll do just give it that extra few degrees protection so you don't need to worry about all these fronds like I said, you can chop them up if you want, if you absolutely have to, or you can sort of fold them in themselves. But at the minute, the straw gives protection against light, frost. If there's a prolonged freeze, anything you can do just to stop that freezing fern through would be appreciated. When it comes to banana plants, this is my uh, Musa Bashu, or Japanese fiber banana. At the minute, it looks like an absolute mess. Sometimes I protect them. The first couple of years I grew them, I definitely did. But now I don't tend to do anything until I see temperatures minus three, minus four forecast, much below that, and I'll start protecting. This year, last year, we've only technically seen minus three. I'm not particularly concerned about that. You might lose a bit of these mushy ends to the stems, but ultimately you can soon chop them off in spring and the plant will grow right away again. So when it actually comes to protecting these, uh, people use a variety of methods. The most simple is put canes around them, wrap fleece around it, and pack the whole thing full of straw. And that you can pretty safely leave for over winter. What it'll do, um, it'll just insulate the plant that little bit better. You'll hopefully keep a lot of the height of these stems. So these are already uh, five, five and a half foot tall, about a metre and a half. If there's a severe freeze, it would wipe out these stems. I know the actual plant would survive and grow from the ground, but for a lot of people, you want to keep that height. You want a more impressive plant going into next year. So for me, that tends to be, if I see minus three, minus four, much lower than that forecast. But some people do protect these starting from late autumn. And they're one of the exceptions. They can handle it. As long as you unwrap them in spring when you start to see your warmer temperatures come through, they should be absolutely fine. The actual plant itself is very hardy. From the roots, I believe they're hardy. I've heard lots of numbers, but minus 50, minus 20 which are temperatures that we hopefully shouldn't see here for, well, apart from the most extreme years. In a lot of other countries where they do see these temperatures quite regularly, they also have quite warm summers to offset that. Here in the UK, our summers tend to be a bit hit and miss, so in my eyes, it's worth protecting the trunk or the stems. I know they're not technically stems, but it's worth protecting them if we do see deep cold, just for that head start on next year's growth. The next group of plants that I'd look at would be half hardy shrubs anything that takes a bit of a beating from the frost these fatsias should be very very hardy but if you can protect them a little bit if you can stop that die back at the top it's probably worth doing this chefflora macrophylla that one that isn't as hardy so that is something that i'd like to protect if it got much below minus five i'd probably do something about it so for these plants generally what i think i'd do is just use a lot of fleece protect them again only for the shortest duration possible the key thing with protection is use the least you have to do i think for the shortest time possible and then get the plants open to the air again as soon as milder temperatures return again here formium should be very hardy if you've got some smaller more colorful varieties bit of fleece over the top on the real coldest nights just gives it that extra couple of degrees of protection which will be all it needs now when it comes to cord lines the most popular variety in the uk uh, cord line australis the green form is you know by far the most common and for those a lot of the time you don't need to protect them this is a smaller plant so not quite as hardy but when they get big you can't practically protect them and again if you wrap them up all year they definitely won't appreciate it so really with those, don't worry, unless there's real severe cold forecast, we're talking minus eight below. There's generally not a lot you can do to protect them. And worst case, if the growing point does get wiped out, they should sprout again further down the trunk. They do grow pretty quickly, so you won't lose too much. So when it comes to palm trees, the most important thing is knowing what plant you've got. Now, I know a lot of people bought a lot of tropical plants this past year, a lot of exotic trees potentially don't know a lot about you know their origins where they come from what care they need so the main thing the most important thing is find out what plant you've got and just have a quick look at the brief sort of care instructions online so with these trachycarpus fortunii there's absolutely nothing you need to do for anything but the absolute worst temperatures which we shouldn't see here they take the cold very well 
some of the some of the leaves or fronds might get a little bit scorched or brown you know if there's really low temperatures in the double figures below zero but for most years you won't see any damage whatsoever so for those wrapping them up would cause more you know mechanical and humidity based damage than just leaving them so for trachycarpus especially larger more mature plants like these you don't need to do a thing now for other palms like here uh, i've got two butias i've got an odorata in the front and areas pather behind it these are definitely more tender than the trachycarpus but they're still quite tough in their own right so for these they generally say minus nine is about the limit i tend to take supplier or you know internet hazardous ratings with a pinch of salt because generally that's the bottom end of what the palm can actually take and sometimes these are tested in countries where they've got hotter summers lets the plant bounce back a lot faster than it would in the uk so generally i'd work a few degrees on the side of caution so for these if i said minus six is about the limit and also you don't want to get a lot of damage you don't want to hit the absolute limit for survival it's about having a good plant going into next year keep it as much of the green as you can so for these i would personally work off anything below minus five minus six and i'd start thinking about protection so again just a simple fleece over the top just stops that repetitive frost damage and hopefully just buys a couple of degrees protection that will leave them looking just like this by next spring with slightly more tender palms like this phoenix canariensis or cidp canary island date palm these they're a lot less hardy than the boots here but tend to be around minus five minus seven is enough to see them off so particularly with this one being potted i think i'd like to protect it if temperatures got much below freezing for a long time certainly if it hit minus three minus four the main thing you can do with this particularly with it being in a pot is just bring it close to the house any way you can tuck it in that's got a slightly more sheltered microclimate just gives those extra couple of degrees protection hopefully stop it getting too much damage now they do grow relatively quickly and the fronds or leaves unlike other plants they're quite bendy so you could always tie this up use a bit of string wrap it up uh, cover the whole thing in fleece drag it into a garage anything like that you can do um should be absolutely fine for it it's only these deeper temperatures that are the real worry but if you've got a smaller plant i would certainly use fleece anything below freezing When it comes to bamboos, most of the varieties, the popular varieties in the UK, cold isn't particularly an issue. They can take a lot lower temperatures than we get here. What you might find is it's more the mechanical snow damage weighing down the columns that will snap them potentially. So you can knock a bit of the snow off if it gets really heavy. Ultimately, they will grow again from the rhizomes. I'm not particularly concerned about these. If the temperature's got to sort of minus 10 or whatever, there'd be a lot of other plants in the garden that I would certainly prioritise over doing anything more for these. So as the last part of today's quick look around the garden to see what I would do if temperatures did actually drop a bit lower, I'd come to these. Basically anything potted, um, there's a lot of colourful cordylines, formiums here that aren't 100% hardy. They should be absolutely fine to minus three, minus four, but anything less than a mild or average winter and they might start to struggle. So the first rule with these, if you've got a plant in a pot, it's not as hardy as one in the ground. That's simply because um, it's got a smaller root ball mass. It can freeze through a lot quicker. It's not shielded by the warmth of the ground. So I would say it's a very rough guideline. If you've got a plant in a pot, it's hard to, it's probably a few degrees less than what they get quoted for on a decent website so you're already at a few degrees less and then if you've got a small plant it won't be able to take as much as well so you could probably take another three degrees off for that so a plant that would technically take or according to a lot of sellers um minus six minus seven if you take a few degrees off for it being small a few degrees off for it being in the pot you've got something that i think you need to protect really minus one minus two and with these you can wrap the pot some people tend to insulate those in bubble wrap. I'm not a massive fan of that because it doesn't let the plant breathe if you take it too far. And also wrap them up at the top. Again, it's not practical for long periods of time just due to the, the rot it would cause in the growing point. So the main thing I would do for these, put them in a sheltered spot. Anything close to your house is going to be a degree or two warmer. It won't freeze through as quickly. Your walls will radiate heat, even in modern houses, and it just gives them an extra level of protection. 
or even better if real deep cold is forecast if you've got a garage it doesn't matter how dark or cold it is the plants would rather be dormant in there than actually frozen through outside when it comes to larger potted plants like these yucca restratas i know it's not necessarily feasible to bring them close to the house but i don't have any particular concerns admittedly some overhead cover will stop a bit of a leaf marking uh, but as long as they're in a well-drained compost or soil you're doing the best you can for them they're very hardy down to definitely double digits below zero so it will take some real severe or prolonged cold to actually do any real damage so with these if you can get them close to your house do it and get them somewhere sheltered with a bit of overhead cover that would be great but worst case if you want to just put some fleece on over the very coldest nights that'll just give them that extra little bit of protection so thanks for watching just a quick walk on the garden more my thoughts on what i need to do with temperatures did drop those extra few degrees we've been quite lucky here so far but it's certainly been a cold year than previous uh, there's been more consistent cold there's been more frosts hello been more frosts we've had a couple of dips down to minus three but with it especially falling in the colder months of the year there's potential for another beast on the east or you know real damaging cold to come up in the next month or so hopefully it doesn't but i don't think there's anything wrong with being a little bit more prepared for it and just knowing the basic steps you can do which are fleecing wrapping up plants or bringing potted plants into more shelter spot into the garage i think basic steps like that just to keep your plants looking green into next year are well worth taking thanks for watching it's freezing quick quick quick